What is up YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. Happy Monday. Happy Memorial Day weekend. Um, shout out to all of our veterans, the people who have served in our military, the people who have risked their lives for this country, the people who, who gave their lives for this country. Um, shout out to my little sister who has been a member of our military for the last 15 years. Um, she has busted her butt. Um, she has been deployed several times um, and she has lost some really good friends. Um, so just uh, remembering all of them today and uh, keeping our veterans and our soldiers and our thoughts and prayers um, because it's not easy being in the service and um, that's what today is all about. But that is not what this video is all about. So today we're gonna be answering some questions from our viewers. Uh, I am doing a giveaway and on that giveaway post, I have allowed people to ask me some questions about what I do, how I got into what I do, um, and the pros and cons of it. Uh, just a whole bunch of different questions that I'm gonna answer a few of them today. Um, and I'm gonna do a few videos on these questions. Uh, so this is the first one, video number one on answering questions of my viewers. Um, and also, as always, before we get started, shout out to my patrons on Patreon. We appreciate you guys so much. Shout out to Jessica Gum for helping us. We are a, a 501c3. We are officially a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Yay! So in the state of Ohio, For Goodness Snakes 8 Rescue and Rehab Center is officially open as a 501c3. We busted our butts. We did the work. Um, it's nice to know people who work at um, other nonprofit agencies. Um, Jessica Gum, shout out to you. You have been nothing but helpful. Um, we just met with her and her husband yesterday on some marketing strategies, and we are gonna start growing really, really fast, you guys. So please stay tuned. Please hit that subscribe button. Please hit that like button. Comment below any questions you have for me on how we did this. Um, where we started, uh, the steps we took to get here. Drop your question down below. I am so excited to be answering questions and getting back to you guys and also doing a little bit of a giveaway. So if your question is picked and your question is answered, um, we will shout out your name and you will be put in a drawing for merchandise. So make sure you comment below Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you share this video with your friends. Do everything you can to get us out there because we are starting some huge, huge things here at FGS8, both on the business side and the nonprofit side. So stick with us guys and watch the rest of this video because it's gonna be a good one. getting started down here in the repti room the first thing i do is i make sure to turn on everyone's uvs we do uv uva lights for everybody um all of our reptiles get uvs um i spend about 30 minutes every morning turning on lights making sure everybody's stuff's clean and um, preparing food for everyone so we gotta get jafar's lights on mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. one two and then go in here and get his uvs up ah, up ah, up ah. i'm not food i am not food he's like okay mom i got you everybody is eating today so 
We're gonna have food responses from everyone. Jafar does pretty well considering he's a reticulated python and they have a pretty high food response. Uh, he pretty much knows it's me when I come in there. Um, but yeah, let's get the rest of these turned on and start our day. American slider uh, and of course Goliath who loves to be out in the sun so I brought him out today um, to do this video with me he's very excited and he's probably gonna try to go exploring anyway we got all of our chores done we fed everybody other than the snakes obviously um, if I had fed the snakes I wouldn't have him outside right now just because they need 48 hours to digest their food before you handle them so um, this YouTube video is all about questions that you all have asked us. Um, and I was doing a giveaway, so I made a couple of posts on some different social media platforms that I have. If you guys wanna be part of giveaways, make sure you go to the link in the description and follow me on um, TikTok, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook um, because I do giveaways, um, I'm gonna do a giveaway once a month, starting uh, last month and then um, continuing on into um, the fall. So make sure you're following all of my socials so that you are able to get in on those giveaways. We give away some pretty cool stuff. This month, people are gonna get a tumbler and a keychain, um, a t-shirt, stuff like that. So let's get started on this. The first question um, was asked by my friend, um, Samantha Vaughn, and it was a humidity question. So basically she said like, how difficult is it to keep the humidity um, where it needs to be in my enclosures? Um, because I have a lot of tropical species um, who need higher humidity. And the answer to this question is it is very difficult. Um, we have to keep several humidity gauges in everyone's enclosures. We do use the digital ones as often as we can, but since we are a nonprofit um, and we just take donations and stuff like that, we do take what we can get. Um, so I do have a lot of uh, non-digital readers as well, um, but we are constantly checking humidity, um, misting, um, we do have some misting systems in some of our very tropical species enclosures like Jafar has a whole misting system that goes along the top of his enclosure and it mists um, for one minute every uh, 45 minutes or an hour. Um, and that keeps his humidity pretty much up where it needs to be. The winter time is very difficult because I live in Ohio, so it gets very dry here. Um, I do have like some spraying systems that I use um, in which I don't have to like sit and pump. I just can kind of, it's almost like a um, gardening tool. Um, so I do use those a lot. Um, I have a couple foggers in some of my really tropical species like our um, green tree python. He has a fogger up in his. Um, but the answer to that is it is pretty difficult and depending on where you live, it can be kind of a pain in the tuchus, especially, especially if you're doing it manually. Um, it's important to have elements in your enclosures that hold humidity um, and moisture without having too much because then you can run into issues like scale rot um, and respiratory issues, things like that. So um, you wanna make sure that you know the exact um, right temperature and humidity for each species you're keeping. Um, I have a little note card thing that I write everything down and I know um, I don't even use it anymore because at this point I just remember um, and I know who's supposed to be where and I check that daily um, to make sure that they all um, are adequate and proper uh, because that is very important and essential in keeping them healthy. So thanks Sam for that question. 
Um, and we're gonna move on to the next question. Next question, it comes to us from Debbie McCauley. And Debbie writes, how do you get people to not be afraid of your reptiles? So, For Goodness Snakes 8 LLC, the business side of it does do educational presentations. And uh, we go around from school to school and birthday parties and a bunch of different things. And we educate, you know, the youth, mostly the youth, um, as you all know, also, um, Goliath was being treated for an upper respiratory infection for weeks after we adopted him. He is all better now, uh, but he still has a sound when he breathes. So if you hear that, um, don't be alarmed. He's just a heavy breather now. I think that the, um, the damage, the respiratory infection did on him. Um, was very great. I think he does have some permanent damage places from being emaciated and whatnot. He still has a lot of weight he needs to gain. Um, he's a great eater now and he's doing really well, but um, if you guys hear that uh, breathing, he is not sick anymore. He is just a, I think he just is a heavy breather now and he's just a really big snake. So um, anyway, back to Debbie's question. So Debbie, usually, um, when we present places and we do things with people, usually we have a group of people who are pretty um, afraid, which is very common and it's very normal because snakes are um, demonized in our society. Uh, so one big thing that I like to do is I give them all cute names. Like this is Goliath, I call him G-Man. Um, and the cute names do help, but then the way I handle them and I show people, you know, how gentle they are and how um, easy it is to handle them and how tolerant they are really of human interaction, people start to uh, become more comfortable around them. I think it's all about um, taking that ignorance and turning it into um, curiosity, helping people to really want to learn about these animals and become involved in um, the, you know, movement towards getting these animals proper care and some uh, animal rights like a lot of other animals have. Um, because right now reptiles are faced with some pretty horrific things because of the lack of education. So. Uh, like if you would keep your dog in a poor circumstance, you know, you could call the Humane Society or the game warden and you would get in trouble for that. There's no such things for um, reptiles, unfortunately, uh, unless it's so bad that like it's very obvious. Um, but reptile keeping is not something that is talked about a whole lot. And I think that just me helping to educate and getting um, people involved and here, do you want to go in the water? You want to check out the water? <laughs> um, getting people to understand the animal, um, taking away the, de the uh, demonizing, um, you know, theories on these guys and helping to educate. I think that that's the biggest thing is making sure people understand that a lot of the things you hear are not accurate or true. So that's helpful. And then obviously, if you give them a cute name, people are like, oh my gosh, that's so cute. So that helps me as well. But that was a really good question. I think um, a lot of people are curious about that because a lot of people do have such a fear of these animals. So thank you, Debbie, for your question. And we'll move on to the next one. I'm gonna move the camera as he moves around so that I can keep an eye on him. Um, so the next question is from my very, very good friend, um, Chance Young. Um, Chance and I have been friends for many, many years, and um, he is an animal lover. He and his partner are animal lovers. Um, they actually uh, rescue ferrets, so um, they're pretty involved in... <laughs> I have to go get him. I have decided to come up onto our porch, and I'm just kind of keeping an eye on him right now. Ernie is crying inside. So I'm gonna answer this question real quick. So Chance wrote, how many species of reptiles are there in our sanctuary and what are your top three favorites? Um, so we have, let's see, we have boa imperators, bearded dragon, um, blue tongued skink, a green tree python, leopard geckos, um, corn snakes, California king snakes, 
um, reticulated python, black and white Argentine tegu, um, savanna monitors, mangrove monitor, uh, iguanas, what else? Um, Red-footed tortoise, slider turtles. Um, I feel like there's something I'm missing. Oh, and a hognose. So, um, Western hognose. So we. Have well, I totally forgot about our ball pythons, which makes 16 species. So, top three favorite are gonna have to be Goliath, um, just because of what he went through. Um, Jafar, um, our reticulated python and uh obviously clyde the green iguana um second to those two are going to be tina turner um, my beardy because she is hilarious um and then i really like elton john i think he's turning into a top five favorite so um, those are my top three and then i give you a couple of extra because um so yeah so 15 different species of reptiles that seems like a lot but honestly reptile keeping most keepers who are like in the hobby um, have a lot of reptiles um, it's nice because there aren't really any laws against how many you can keep as long as they are being kept appropriately so um, that's pretty cool because we can have as many as we want as long as they are being kept um, safely so that's pretty cool. So yeah, 15 different species. My top three are Jafar, Goliath, Clyde, and then going down to Tina Turner and um, Elton John. So, so thank you, Chance. Um, everyone who is asking questions, your name is going to be going into a drawing um, to win some free merchandise. So let's move on to the next question. Next question is asked by Brittany Tyson and she wants to know what the best starter snake is. Um, if you're just coming into the hobby and you don't own any snakes and you don't really know um, a whole lot about keeping, uh, my personal opinion is going to be colubrid species, but specifically elafes, um, which are your rat snakes. They are very easy to take care of. Um, if you get North American elafes, um, they're going to be, you know, your, um, your corn snakes, your, um, garter snakes, your black snakes, stuff like that. Um, your milk snakes, those are very, very easy to take care of because they don't need, their husbandry requirements are pretty minimal. Um, you don't need crazy amounts of humidity. They can survive. They're a very hardy snake. Um, so they can survive in lower temperatures. Um, they are a very food driven snake, um, because they are hunters. So, um, they, it's not likely they're going to skip meals. Um, if they are skipping meals, if they aren't, um, you know, super interested in eating, you might look into maybe why, um, they are feeling maybe bored or depressed or something like that. And you can switch up their enclosures. Um, we have to do that every now and again, because our snakes get super bored. They are very used to being handled. If we don't have time to handle them a whole lot, you can definitely tell that they are getting, um, you know, stir crazy, a little cabin fever. They're wanting to come out more. If we don't get them out, then they, they do refuse food. They're pretty spoiled. Um, but in my opinion, any of the Elafe species, which is a subspecies of a, the colubrid um, family, um, which colubrids are all amazing. I think colubrids house some of the most beautiful snakes in the world. And I think that they are the cutest snakes in the world. So um, definitely your corn snakes, your milk snakes, stuff like that. So um, make sure that you obviously do an adequate amount of research before purchasing one of these animals. Make sure that you are giving them enough um, enclosure size. You still want a gradient of heat so they can thermoregulate. Um, you want to give them um, enough things that they feel you know, secure that they can kind of roam around in. Um, they do really like to feel hidden. So there's a lot of stuff in our enclosures for them, um, but they make really great pets. My neighbor's knowing her yard and she probably thinks I'm crazy because I'm just sitting here making videos. But thank you, Brittany. That was a really good question. And I hope that that helped the answer at least. So we are gonna answer just one more question for this YouTube video um, because I'm gonna make more than one um, on the questions that you all are asking. 
this is like just one of those things that these are just common questions that I get. I'm gonna do one more question on this video and this is from one of my patrons on Patreon, Anita Leverd. Um, every time I see her name, I like think it's my name because it's so similar to my name. Um, but she writes, what truly brought your passion of loving reptiles and what are our future plans at FGS8? I love this question and I have a very long answer for it. And so I got Elton John to be part of our video now. Um, and Ernie's inside crying because he wants um, out here with me. But anyway, we're going to answer this question. So dating back to even when I was like a little child, um, my sisters and I grew up on a farm and we would go into the creek beds and find crawdads, salamanders, um, corn snakes, all types of different critters. Um, I've never been scared of reptiles, amphibians, none of it. I would pick up pretty much anything I could find. Um, we had a lot of Lafay species out on the farm and my sisters and I would literally just like pick them up. And um, I remember um, at one point, um, we found a little baby garter snake and it had no teeth yet and it was just biting us and we like thought it was the cutest thing ever but we had to move it out of the driveway because it was going to get smashed by a car and i was probably eight maybe nine um so i have literally never been afraid of snakes um, i've always been fascinated by reptiles fascinated by all animals um as a whole but Specifically, I noticed that reptiles needed more of a voice than other animals because cute things people advocate for and scary things people tend to ignore and push off to the side. Um, so I really, really am passionate about specifically reptiles because they do not have as much of a voice as some of your other critters. Fast forward to when I was 17-ish years old, um, somebody had a ball python or I'm sorry a Burmese python um, with a broken back um, somebody hi Elton somebody had um, an improper enclosure the Burmese python escaped and it got stuck in um, a vent system and instead of prying the vent system off with wire cutters or something like that they just pulled the snake directly out and it broke its back um, so I was able to foster that snake for some time. Hi, buddy. Hi. He's distracting me. Anyway, I was able to um, foster that snake for some time, um, help to rehab it back to its healthy state, and um, get it off to a sanctuary uh, where it could be better cared for. So. Um, that was my first experience with rehabbing reptiles and that's been about 15 years ago. So I do have um, a passion for this and I do have a vision for our future with FGS 8. So as I have said before, we just got our 501c3. Um, so we are officially a nonprofit organization. Um, we are a rehab center and we are dedicated to preventing and stopping animal cruelty, specifically in the reptile community. Uh, but my goal is to open a facility that is large enough to facilitate an entire zoo of animals. Um, one in which our community can get involved in and be part of the experience of these amazing animals and um, help us grow the awareness of keeping reptiles responsibly, um, making sure they have adequate husbandry, making sure they have adequate nutrition um, and adequate attention because these are amazing animals. They make wonderful pets. Very important for people to educate themselves, um, especially animal lovers, um, pay attention to the animals who are less likely to have a voice because um, it's important for us to, you know, make sure that all animals who are being kept are being kept safely, securely, responsibly. Um, they get a healthy, a healthy life and a loving life because, I mean, what's the point of keeping animals if we don't do it well? So thank you, Anita, for that question. Thank you guys for watching this video. Again, make sure you like, subscribe, share, do all of the things. Check out the link below. Make sure you follow me on all of my socials. Um, comment questions that you have. 
and I will surely add them to our next video and add your name in a drawing to win some merchandise. Again, from all of us here at Four Goodness Snakes 8, thank you for watching this video. Make sure that you like and subscribe, and please don't forget to check out the link in the bio um, and comment below some questions you have for me about our 501c3 and about our educational program.